All right, when we left off last time, I mentioned that we were at this group called Mandibulata. And that, that group composes the kind of top portion of this tree. Um, but I'd like to first make a statement about this tree on the whole. And that is that a lot of the groups that you see here are not exactly set in stone. Example, Mandibulata has been defined as a lot of different groups, some of those, you know, mutually exclusive and some of them not. Even within the past 20 years, there's been a lot of changes. Um, the reason for this is that any of these groups represent various hypotheses about how the tree of life is arranged and about ancestry, um, about what's related to what. And some of these hypotheses are, are very, very, very well supported and, and we kind of don't have a problem with saying things like insects represent a monophyletic group, which means that insects have a single common ancestor. But for some of these other groups, that's not so easy to say, just because we don't have as strong or as good of evidence to support some of these groups. So with that said, we're going to carry on with Mandibulata and the, and the rest of this talk, uh, exclusive of the Hexapoda, which are insects and their kin. We'll get to them in a later talk. So back to this tree again, Mandibulata. Um, and Mandibulata is defined, the clade Mandibulata is defined as arthropods that have mandibles or jaws. So like you can see this image of, I guess it's a wasp is what I'm, I'm thinking it's supposed to be. You can see that it has this pair of, of moving jaws that it uses to capture or kill or crush or, or chew its food. And this group Mandibulata contains a number of, of subgroups within it. First one of those is Crustacea, or the Crustaceans. These are things like crabs and crawfish and, and, and shrimp, uh, and, and a variety of other things. We'll get into that in a second. Diplopoda, which is millipedes, which together with Chilopoda, or centipedes, comprises a maybe or maybe not related group, single ancestor group, uh, Myriapoda. We'll talk a bit about that. And then Hexapoda, which as I said, are insects and their kin. And we'll talk a little bit about that, we'll get into that, but save most of that for the next set of lectures. All right, so the first of these groups we're here at ring number five, or the blue branch of this tree, is crustacea, or the crustaceans. So, crustaceans are defined by a couple of different characters. Uh, the first of these characters is that they have biramous limbs, or biramous legs. Bi meaning two, ramus meaning branches. Um, and, and these are composed of, as, as the name suggests, two branches, the endopod, which is the inside leg, and the exopod, which is the outside leg. Crustaceans are also united by the type of larvae or, or, or babies that they, they have. Um, and this is called a nauplius larvae. And they're, they're these kind of things with, with a bunch of frills coming off of them, and then a single eye right in the middle of their forehead called a nopplier eye. And and that that defines this as a group. So there's a baby shrimp and a baby barnacle down in the corner here. And they you can see they kind of look similar. That's because they're both crustaceans. They're both nopplius larvae. Um 
And this this group is is you know fairly diverse morphologically and behaviorally. Most of them are aquatic, but there are some noteworthy exceptions, and we'll talk a little bit about some of those. The first group that we're going to talk about, first group of crustaceans we're going to talk about, are the copepods or copepoda. And copepods are these primarily aquatic creatures. Some of them occur in, in kind of moist terrestrial spaces that are kind of watery. Um, and they're defined by retaining that single nauplier eye into adulthood. And they don't change morphologically a, a whole lot from larvae. They, they, there are some differences between the adults and the larvae. But, but they are considered one of the more primitive groups of crustaceans because they don't change very much. And for a popular culture reference here, if you're familiar with the show SpongeBob SquarePants, Plankton actually is a copepod. And the second group that we're going to talk about here briefly um, are the amphipods, amphipoda. Amphipods are a group that is primarily aquatic. Um, there are a whole bunch of marine amphipods out there, lots, lots of different marine species. Um, but there are a few terrestrial ones. Uh, they're members of the family Taltriidae, and they're sometimes referred to as land hoppers or land shrimp or, or sand hoppers, depending on who you ask. Um, amphipods for the most part, are laterally compressed. This means that they are, are kind of flattened from side to side. And you, you can kind of see that in the image down below. Um, they have... Oh, uh, the name amphipod actually comes from amphi, which means different, and pod, or podos, meaning leg. Um, and... and this refers to the fact that they have two different types of legs on, on their kind of central segment called the perion. Um, you can see in the image here that they've got their, their periopods number one and two are referred to as nathopods, whereas as the later periopods are, are just referred to as periopods in this case. Um, this is in contrast to the isopods, which is our next group, isopoda, which are dorsoventrally compressed, which means they have a, a, like come flattened from top to bottom, which again you can kind of see in the images here. And isopods only have one type of leg on the perion. Iso meaning the same, and pod again leg, um, and there are some terrestrial isopods. There, there are again many more marine isopods. As a matter of fact, there's really giant ones that live at the bottom of the ocean and feed off of bacteria on hydrothermal vents. They're 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 like a eight inches long kind of thing. Um, but there are some terrestrial ones, uh, and they're sometimes referred to as wood lice or there's ones that are called wharf roaches in the family like Geodae. Uh, sometimes people call them roly polies or pill bugs or chuggy pigs. There's, there's a whole list of names to go for these guys. The next group that we're going to talk about is, is a bit more familiar of a group. Uh, when you say crustacean, typically what you think about are decapods uh, or decapoda. Decapods are things like crawfish, lobster, crabs, true shrimp, prawns, and, and things like that. Um, and the name decapoda comes from deca, ten, again, podos, feet, uh, because they have ten thoracic legs, ten legs on their, their central part of their body. Um, and one example of a, of a truly terrestrial um, decapod is, is the fiddler crab, which have these one giant claw, the males do, to attract mates with or, or fend off potential uh, competitors. Um, 
and there are a variety of other crustaceans out there. Uh, Euphalsacians are, are krill, which, you know, they're, they're wh the whales eat them. Uh, there's branchiopodes, uh, which are a, a variety of weird little things that are sometimes found in, in vernal pools out in the western United States. Um, there's cephalocaridians, which are, are really weird things, and rimipedes, which are, are this, this weird group that's only found in, in, in deep water caves and stuff. There's stomatopods, which are, are mantis shrimp, and one that you don't often think about are barnacles, thecostraca. Um, barnacles are actually a arthropod, and a lot of people don't realize that when they are little, they have nauplier larvae, just like every other crustacean does. The next group that we're going to talk about um, has classically been called Myriapoda, or many feet, um, and you, you can see the kind of loose, scraggly, circled area here. That is the Myriapods, the centipedes, the millipedes, and their kin, quote-unquote. Um, the problem is, is that we're really not entirely sure that these groups are all that related or exactly where they go or, or how they they're should be put together, or really, even if they belong over here in the mandibulates instead of being over in the arachnomorphs. Probably, and a lot of the evidence seems to suggest, that they do belong here in the mandibulates, but there have been ideas that maybe they aren't, don't really belong there. So the subphylum, or tentatively subphylum, Myriapoda, uh, contains two groups. The first of those groups is the chilopodes, or the, the centipedes. The second of those groups is the progoniatids, um, millipedes and their kin. So there, there are a couple of groups that go in within that, uh, a couple of... Yeah. Uh, the Symphylans, which are these weird little things, the Poropods, which are, again, weird little soil-dwelling things, and the Diplopodes, or Millipedes. Um, we're really going to kind of focus on the two that I have highlighted here in red, and I will make the statement, again, that, that this phylogeny really kind of is a giant mess, so take it all with a grain of salt. So first, the chilopodes, centipedes. So the class chilopoda, or centipedes, uh, are voracious predators. They all hunt for their prey. Um, they're defined by having one pair of legs per body segment. And also, they have this pair of, of pincher-like uh, venom-injecting claws in front of their mouth, called forcipules, and actually the name Chilopoda comes from those pincher-like venom-injecting claws. Um, chilo actually means lip, and then poda means foot, so it's, it's a reference to those. Um, there are some fairly large ones of these guys out there that have a, a fairly venomous and painful bite, um, and, and not something you want to go picking up and, and playing with and, you know, having, you know, the time of your life with, though maybe you really do. I do. Uh, the next group that we're going to talk about is Diplopoda, or the Millipedes, and that's here at, at ring number seven. Class Diplopoda, Millipedes, are, are mostly unlike the centipedes, mostly scavengers or, or herbivores. They feed, a lot of them feed on decaying organic material on the forest floor. Um, and they're typically found in moisture spots and you, you, you'll you find them under leaf litter and things like that. So diplopoda, diplo, two, poda, foot, refers to the fact that they have two legs per apparent body segment. It's really kind of a, a joined double segment that's fused um, on most of their segments. Um, millipedes don't have the forcipules, which bear, you know, these pincher-like claw things, uh, and they can inject venom, but many of them do actually have 
like scent glands or, or poison glands called ozopores uh, scattered along their trunk segments for defense. And, and some of them will actually um, exude like cyanide uh, and to, to prevent things from eating. All right. And that brings us to the hexapods, or hexapoda. And that's, again, insects and their kin. Um, all right, so hexapods. Here's, here's just a kind of a, a start to this, and, and, and I'll come back to this in the next talk. Um, hexapods are defined by having three tagmata, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. All hexapods have three pairs of legs, and all of those legs are attached to the thorax. So they have six legs, hex meaning six, and podos meaning legs. Um, there are what are referred to as intonathus hexapods, which have their mouth parts, into within uh, their, their bodies. So into meaning um, within, nathus meaning mouth. Um, their, their mouth parts are actually buried within in their head, and they exude them out to feed. Uh, and, and these are the groups Protura, Calimbola, and Diplura. And then there are Ectonathus hexapods. These are things that have their mouth parts outside of the head, and they just use them out there. Um, and this is insects. So that brings us to the end of this tree. We're up here at number eight with the hexapods. And now I have to show you another tree. First, I want to say, don't panic. This looks like a lot of material, but really when you break it down, it's kind of not that difficult to deal with. And we'll talk a little bit about how to go through learning some of these groups a little bit better. So, without further ado, here is the hexapod tree. As you can see, there are lots of groups here. And we're going to talk about all of these groups individually. 